John Calipari's got some explaining to do. He's at the podium in Pittsburgh. Cameron Drummond, Lexington Herald leader. John, you said many times that this team was built for March. Uh, what went wrong tonight to kind of go away from, from your belief in the team? You know, what happened tonight to, to kind of go away from what you thought this team could be? Um, we, we made some critical mistakes at critical times again today. I mean, we had our chances. As good as they played and as many shots as they made, we still had our chances, and both on defense and offense. And when you have a really young team and you look at where did the mistakes come from, they were freshmen. Um, uh, they had performed on the road in hostile environments that I didn't expect some of the stuff today. But... They have gotten so much better in what they're doing. Um, they never stopped. They fought. We just made some errors. Um, but I come back to this one hurt because they are the kind of team you love coaching. And, you know, I wanted them to advance because of all that they've been through. And I wanted them to have a chance to relish and cherish this event. I've been through it 20 sometimes. My teams have done really well. We've lost a couple of these now. Um, but them, this is their time. Um, we're better than we played, but you got to give Oakland credit. I mean, they, they out-rebound. They got 16 offensive rebounds. Come on. One of them was late. Come on. I mean, we've had that issue, but, um, you know, there was some breakdown stuff, but, you know, we had our chances. Middle aisle right there. Yeah, John Clay with the Herald Leader. John, as you mentioned, you've lost a couple of these now. Were there any similarities to this game and that game? And, if, and also, I know you did things to try to get them, make, you want them to play loose. You did things like taking them bowling and that sort of thing. But they look like they played tight. Did you feel they played tight? I don't know. You have to ask them. But I thought they were anxious. And when you're anxious, you get really tired really fast. So we had a couple guys that started the game and were exhausted within a minute and a half, two minutes. Um, so I think they were a little anxious. But I'll tell you, at halftime, you know, we're down a bucket, and these guys are in there, and they're, you know, you know, we make our run. You think, okay, we got this. And, you know, there were three. We miss a dunk. We miss a layup. We miss another play. And all of a sudden, it becomes anybody's ball game. And they were playing with house money, and they made shots, and we didn't. But I... I don't, I, you have to ask them. I mean, we did nothing, like even me during the game. You have to admit, like, I wasn't saying anything to the officials. I was just trying to encourage and we can do this and, you know, trying to push some buttons to get the right combinations out there. Um, but they're freshmen. We don't know how they're going to respond in this stuff. I didn't hear. Were there similarities, similarities in here? No, we were we were we were beat up that game. I mean, Kellen, if he didn't have the plantar fasciitis, we were a beat up team. Ty had a high ankle sprain. I mean, so and we still had our chances to win, and we messed around and lost. But this was the full roster. I thought Aaron played well. I thought he did some good stuff. But um, you know, we weren't quite tough enough to get some of those balls and some of the baskets they scored around the goal. Um, I just come back to, you know, I, I, it just, I hate it for these guys that people try to define this season by that game. And it's natural and it's how this business works. But this, this group was a ball to coach. And, you know, we did things to help them and bring them together. And they did it for each other. They've got great hearts. And, you know, this, that's what's devastating about this for me. Yeah, I've lost tough games before. And we've won some 
really buzzer beater games at pooling game. I mean, I've been through everything in my career. So, but this is one that's like, man. All right, questions back middle. John, it seems to be pretty well agreed upon that this was a very connected team. Is it possible for teams to sometimes care too, mount, too much about each other because there were a lot of the big mistakes that were made through the course of this season on late, late plays were over help, over commitment to try to help a teammate? Is that logical? Some of it was on offense. Just why'd you do that? And, and they're not machines and they're not robots. And, you know, you, they need the experience of some of this stuff. So when you're in this environment, you can do it. And I thought we went through every experience I could talk about. We were, we, we were losing more than one game for 36 minutes and came back and won the game. So we did that a couple times. So, but maybe over help, maybe sometimes I think they were, they, they're so talented that they would try to take over a game themselves. That's more offensively. Or doing what you're saying, Mike, just leave. Why did you do that? You know, I'm going to go make a play defensively. Well, you, no. Or um, I'm going to make the play offensively, so I'm going to take the next three shots. Okay, you missed three now. Now we have an issue. Now we're down five. And so sometimes when you're that talented, you're like, okay, let me take this over. Um, the good news is I thought that was something that would play good for us where we could get separation from people. But in this kind of game, it kind of hurt us. All right, we just got questions for two more right here on the right and then left middle. Cal, you talked about a lot of player mistakes. What is something, what is something that you feel like you could have or should have done I to tried help these to call guys? a timeout. And I should have been quicker to the trigger on the pass across court. I was yelling timeout, but I got it late when I knew I saw the court. And I went timeout, timeout, and he let go of the ball. So I could have done that. Um, I think maybe more boxing one um, earlier. Now, he scored. We fouled him once, and he scored a three even when we were in that. But I think we could have gone earlier to that. Um, but hindsight, when you're coaching, if you did something and we had won this game, it was you were a genius. And if you don't do it, you're the, you, you know, you're the bad guy and all that stuff. But you know, like I said, I thought the preparation was what it needed to be, because you cannot in this tournament come in and start changing. You change everything. Now they get tight. Now they think too much versus just play. So we made some just adjustments to what we were doing offensively. We're one of the best zone teams in the country, to be honest with you. And we missed a bunch of shots today. All right, last question right here, left middle. C.L. Brown, <coughs> excuse me, Louisville Courier Journal. Uh, John, what kind of an impact does a game like this have in St. Peter's a couple of years ago just on your philosophy moving forward? Uh, does that mean the different scheduling approaches? Does that mean different roster approaches in terms of veterans? Um, it's a good question. Like, I've done this with young teams my whole career. Um, and it's going to be hard for me to change that because we've helped so many young people and their families that I don't see myself just saying, okay, we're not going to recruit freshmen. And I mean, the, the thing that we've been blessed with is families bring their sons to us and we do what we're supposed to do to help them prepare for the rest of their lives. Um, but I've taken some older guys and we've done it. I like what we were doing offensively. How do we get tougher? How do we get more physical? My teams defensively and rebounding have all been better than this, but we've never been like this offensively. And I kind of like coaching the way I did this year. So I got, we, we've got to figure out who's coming back and who's not. We got this transfer stuff going on. We may not need it. We have an unbelievable group coming in that I feel really good about. We add some guys and they stay. I mean, you know, we'll, 
I'm going to... Uh, I'll meet with them tonight. I talked to him after, but I'm going to meet to, with them in my room tonight. And uh, these guys took this really hard. I mean, they took it really hard. I mean, they're and and I took it hard. I, I'll say it again. I, I feel bad for our fans who all traveled again. They're here. We we're, we're these kids. They they know they're playing for these fans and our fans the, the, who are the best in the country. They they travel. They're everywhere. Um, and I imagine they're hurting like we are hurting. So I'll, I'll look at other ways that we can do stuff. Um, but, you know, there's this thing here. Um, it's a different animal. Um, we've been able to help so many kids and win so many games and Final Fours, national titles and all this stuff, win league championships with young guys. It's changed on us. It's, all of a sudden, it's gotten really old. So we're playing teams that our average age is 19. Their average age is 24 and 25. So do I change because of that? Maybe add a couple older guys to supplement, but that's what these two did. And, and if Trey doesn't get hurt, you know. Some really interesting comments there by Coach Cow. Perhaps changing his philosophy. He's not going to stop going after freshmen. Look, the state of Kentucky, out, there's no major professional sports team there in the Big Four. So the Kentucky basketball team in Lexington, the surrounding area, this is their professional team. So when they lose, this isn't like, you know, for one team, they lose the game, it's no big deal. This is one of those, it's one of the winningest programs in college basketball history. So they, they lose a game, and it is, the sky is falling. Take a look at their past four NCAA tournaments. Uh, they missed it in 2021. 2022, they lost to 15th seed St. Peter's. Last year, round of 32, lost to Kansas State. And this year, an embarrassing, disappointing loss to Oakland. That is four straight Sweet 16s without Kentucky for the second time ever.